Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho, and our Stara here is still working away diligently, busy cultivating in the diseased crop so that hopefully the disease doesn't spread any further and corrupt any of the rest of our valuable crop that is still yet to be harvested. Um, as you can tell, I am still sounding rather croaky. My throat is feeling a lot better, so I'm able to talk at least. It's just that at the moment I sound a little bit like Barry White, so um, yeah. Um, it, 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 at least I can still I can talk and we, we can keep things moving, so I'm counting this as a major bonus. Um, we've not got very much left to do with this one, and then we can start working on the big field down here. If we take a look at the growth, you can see we've got this huge, great big area down here. Which brings me to my weekly question. Do you want me to leave this field down here, this great big field, just like that, and so that we've got square edges? Uh, which, you know, the advantage of that is that it's easier for the hired help to deal with the field. Or would you rather I went for a more natural edge around the field, following the curve of the road and so on, um, which the advantage is it's going to give us slightly more land um, it looks a little better but then you've got the uh, you do have some issues with the hide help so th there's pros and cons for both of them I uh, don't know which one you want so it's your vote it's your game head into the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner do you want a square edged large field down here like this or would you rather I did a natural curve and plowed in a bit more following the um like the lines of the roads and so on um as soon as this one is finished, we're going to put it cultivating the big field down there. We can get, get started on that, so then that field will be ready for planting. The planting is coming along quite nicely. We've got our little Stara over here. Oh, we've still got our Christmas tree decorations up over here. We will take a look at that before the end of the episode. Just uh, another look at our Christmas tree of Christmas trees. And we come over to here. So we've got 89 litres left on that one. So I'm just going to start this bad boy up here. We're going to race over there, hopefully, and dump some of this seed into that one before he stops and I want to catch it before it actually stops um, planting so I won't get it before it um, does the turn here but we can catch it after it's turned and then we can stop right in front of it and then it will allow us to fill up without having to stop the actual hired help if we can get this to work correctly um, we have done it before with this one so we, we do know that it works um, the only thing that we're going to need to do fairly soon is we're going to need to get some fertilizer to go into this truck. So we'll just back that one around there. There we go. We can fill that one up full of seed and he's away. So that one will carry on there. I've got 50% fertilizer in the Stara there. Why is it stopped? It should be going now. I've moved out the way. Okay. I'm not sure why it's done that. Let me let me turn around a minute. Maybe it's maybe we need to go in front of it again. Right, look, 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 look here. See, I'm right in front of you. There we go. I've blocked you and I've moved out of the way. Okay, that's the first time I've ever seen it do that. I've never actually seen it do that before. It's gotten part way. It's then decided that it doesn't like it. So if I press H to take it off of that, if I put it going again and he's away yeah I don't know what caused that but there's obviously a little bug there somewhere it's doing something it'll be fine let's not worry about it so where is our bigger star today I have got a different plan um we can just go through as soon as we've got this other one going oh there he is he's finished already okay that one is now done so that was our field that we lost due to disease in the crop that was our um random event for the week it could have been a lot worse, I suppose. I mean, I did think that it was a little bit harsh considering that we've only just recently had the cows escape and they caused a whole lot of problems. But, I mean, it, it could have been worse. We could have... Actually, I'm just wondering how it could have been worse. Um, I suppose we could have lost a whole load of our stored crops or uh, some of the animals could have perished or something like that. But, um, generally speaking, I'm actually thinking that it probably couldn't have been a lot worse than what it actually was. We did get one of the worst ones and we're, I mean, we had the worst one I think that we've got a couple of weeks ago and then we get this one here we've got to lose another half a field of crop I mean I suppose it could have been worse it could have been this big field here that was planted and we could have had to lose half of this one now that would have been worse there's no question whatsoever that that would have been worse but um, oh, we'll see let's let's just carry on 
Um, I've got a feeling, though, that this field here is already cultivated, so it's not going to let me do very much to it. If I ju I'm just going to stick this one in here, and we'll see what it does. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, Helper M has already completed their task. Not interested. So we'll, we'll ignore that little bit along the top there, and we'll bring this one over this side a little bit. We've got a strip up through. I tell you what, I can start that from this side. I can do it from here, look. If I come round there and I start it on that point, it'll come down through. There we go. And it will cultivate the freshly ploughed ground. So it'll go up through there and it'll come back down and it will it'll come back down and it'll go all the way back up. But then it should start doing the whole thing. All the way up through, it should do the whole lot all in one go. So we'll come back and we'll check on that a little later on. Uh, right, now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to start clearing some of this stuff away. We've got all of this machinery and everything on here, and we're today we're going to start working on making this like you all voted for. Now, what you all said was that you wanted me to put some storage up, you wanted, um, you want me to concrete the whole area, and then you want me to put some storage on here as well, uh, some barns and that, so that we've got... Um, places that we can store our machinery. So I need to get a tractor over here so that I can start shifting some of that stuff. We're going to shove it over here. I'm going to leave this piece up the top here at the moment covered with grass. And we're going to start working on concrete in some of the area down over there. The only thing I was wondering is whether I should cut the grass here first. Because ordinarily in real life, if you were to do something like this, you would cut the grass first. Just because it would make it easier to handle. It would make it easier to process. Um... I want to have a look at the cows a second and see what we're doing with grass. Grass is still full. Hay is over here. I'm actually thinking that we might just use a little bit of a cheat just on this. Um, if we pick this up with a bucket and we move it up here a little bit, we'll go over it with a hay tedder, turn it into hay, and then spoon it back into the trough so we can get rid of this great big heap. I'm getting fed up with this here. We've got the Animal Table Manners mod, so this is just the heap of grass that was here to start with. If we can get rid of that, then we don't have any issues, so it'll be nice and clean and tidy. So I think we'll do that very first. That's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to get the load all, and we'll move that out a little bit, and then we'll go and buy a hay turner. We're also going to get a mower, and we're going to mow... Well, once we've cleared the machinery off this area, we'll probably want to move these bales as well, except... I'm not going to move those manually. I think I'll just go and get our trailer. And I think we need the truck as well. I don't think I've got a dolly to be able to pull it behind a tractor. Uh, so we're... Pr well, actually, no. The, see, the thing is, the truck is being used, isn't it? Um, hmm. Perhaps a tractor and a dolly would be a better option. So we'll do that as well. And then we can mow this little area here. Uh, we've got a whole load of hay... And we got a whole load of silage. So I'm sort of thinking, you know, if we did do this, maybe we should just turn it into, you know, just have grass. But we don't need grass. we got loads and loads of grass. We've got more grass than we know what to do with. It's coming out of our ears. And we still need to kind of get this gotten rid of. So then it comes back to, well, why are we bothering? Because, you know, we want to try and do realism. So I think we'll turn it into hay. That's, that's a long story short, I think, if we turn it into hay. So let me just keep moving some of this stuff around a minute. Oop. I've got the um, manual attaching mod here, haven't I? So we're going to undo that one there. I will finish moving the rest of that stuff, and I will get the load all, and we'll spoon that grass out of the way, and then we can see about moving some of these bales. Well, that's most of it moved. I've just got that one trailer left to move, the, um, the Arkizan. And then we've got the area clear. So then we want to be getting a mower up here. And we've got to decide what mower we want. We've also, we're wanting to get a hay turner. So that we can make a little bit of hay. And I don't think we're going to need anything else. Because the, the, we'll just put the hay loose into the trough at the moment. We're not going to worry about doing it any other way. And yeah, so what, I don't, I don't know what mowers to get. I mean... We, we always do the butterfly mowers, but at the same time, there's a reason for that. The butterfly mowers are by far the best mowers to get. Um, we've done the trailed mower, and we've used that a bit as well. We've had a trailed mower and a front-mounted mower. This, it's a nice combination, but it's a lot more work. So I'm thinking that we will just go for something familiar here, and we will get the standard front-mounted um, mower and then the rear butterfly mower as well. 
um, and have the, the two of them together. We don't have the reverse drive option on any of our tractors, so we won't be doing that today. Um, but we can still have the mowers and they will still be able to work. And this tractor should be enough to be able to operate those mowers properly. So I need I need the mowers, but I also want a hay turner. So I'm actually going to try... Actually, I was wondering if I should do that or not. I was just thinking I could, like, balance the whole on the tractor and bring it back all at once. But I'm thinking that's probably not the best way to go about doing this. So if we get down to the store, we will get... Uh, we're getting the mowers back first and we'll get them here and then we can sort of decide what we do after that. I'm thinking probably that we'll just turn that little patch into hay and we'll bail it up. Let's have a look here and we'll see what hay turner we want. Well, first of all, we're going to get the mowers. So if we just get those a second, uh, where are we? Mowers. And right, we've, I mean, there are these modded ones here. That's a 9.9 .9 stretch on those, which that's a 9 and that one is an 8.4. That's the one that joins together, so we don't really need to worry about that. These are wider. The Lely ones here are wider. Um, so you get a 9 meter spread on the back there. This one here, though, is nearly 10 meters. That is a big spread. 190 horsepower required. That one's 90. And in our garage, if we take a look at our John Deere tractor, I can't actually remember what size the thing is. All of our Christmas trees. We will get rid of those. Uh, we'll probably it'll be next week that we'll be getting rid of them, I, th I should think. Um, this one here is a 245 horsepower tractor. So we shouldn't have any problem towing the mowers. So I think John Deere is the way to go. Because we've said John Deere is what we want to get as often as possible. So we'll get these John Deere mowers here. And these are Mod Hub ones. So there won't be a link for them. Just have a hunt around on Mod Hub for them. Um, what have we got? Tedders. So then we've got to decide how big a tether we want. Now, I really do love this one. I've used this one a lot in the time lapse, and there's a reason for that. I really do love this one because of the way that you're able to angle it. I don't know how much hay we're going to be making on this series. I suspect we will be making a bit, won't we? Um, so, yeah, do we go for that one? I mean, that's 11 meters. That's, that is a big turner. And then you've got that one at 8.7. I mean, this is a little tiny ones over here. And, and then you've got these two fairly substantial ones here as well. I think we're going to go with this one, even though I've used it quite a bit in the time lapse. I used it in the Dowland Farm one, and if I make any hay in Sandy Bay, I'll be buying that same hay turner again. Um, and there is a reason for it. There is a reason for that. That mower is a uh, mower. That turner is absolutely brilliant. The way that it angles so that you can um, like throw the crop away from the rest of it, uh, like away from the edges of the field, is just absolutely brilliant it really really is an incredibly useful thing um and if anybody's ever done haymaking in real life you'll sort of you'll uh, really be able to appreciate just how awesome that little addition is it does make such a difference because that is the one the biggest thing with making hay is when you're turning it it gets flicked into the hedge it's really difficult to stop it from being flicked into the hedge which is why a lot of farmers will do a couple rounds around the outside of a field that they're going to be doing for hay. They will actually do a couple rounds around the outside with um, just a silage. They'll, they'll take a couple rounds of silage bales, so then they don't have this issue of the hay being flicked into the hedge. Does make a huge difference. So we get this back to the farm, and we'll mow that tiny little patch. I know these mowers are a little bit overkill just for that tiny little bit, but we're going to be using them for doing other grass as well. So. Um, it is a long-term investment. Just wanted to check on this one and see how it's doing. Uh, it's just coming up to the very top end of the field, doing a little turn around. So if we go back through and we can take a look and see how much is cultivated now, it is working all the way down to the very bottom end of the map and coming back up again. So it will very soon actually start going into the field itself. And it's actually about to start doing a little bit on the very edges of the field with this pass. So. It's doing a great job. It's not stopped. It's not gotten hung up anywhere, which means that it should just keep going until it's done this entire field. Take a little while, admittedly, but it's doing a great job. So we'll let that one carry on there. Uh, what I do need to do is I need to be able to get a trailer and a dolly. I want a dolly on a, one of the trailers. This tractor here would probably have been better for the mowers. It's more powerful. I'm starting to think, actually, this is the one that I looked at that was 250 horsepower. I think the other one is actually a bit smaller than that. Uh, the 6250, wasn't it? Let's have a quick scroll through. I got a feeling about this. I got, I got a feeling that we've got the wrong one. That's one there, the 6R, is 245 horsepower. That one there, the 7030, is 209. 
it should be enough so yeah the other one it should be enough this one here is the one that i'm going to go i'm going to take this one down to the shop we're going to leave the plow actually we'll take the plow back down to the field down there and put it away properly um we'll take this one to the shop we'll get the dolly on this one and then we can bring it back and we can hitch on to that um auto load trailer that we've got we can move all of those bales just out of the way so that we can mow and then we can start putting down some concrete on there just get this one racing over to the seed drill as he's now run out of seed again that one on round he's still got fertilizer in him but we are actually going to need fertilizer before we finish this field he's not got enough fertilizer in him to finish the field and he definitely doesn't have enough seed either so the unfortunate that is the unfortunate thing with this really small seed drill that we're currently using it does need frequent refills and it is a bit of a nuisance so we will be looking at changing that however it does mean that we're going to need a fair bit of a bigger tractor can we just start this one up again there we go that one can keep going and if you just take a look here at the seed drills we've got uh let me look through we've got sewing machines here this is one that we want and we scroll up through so we've got that star there and we've got that star there from the platinum expansions i wasn't going to be using the horse ones this time um but that one right there is he's got a huge tank on him i don't know how much is seed and how much isn't but that requires 420 horsepower it's it's literally one extreme to the other with these two seed drills so i mean i'd like to use that one but we don't currently have a tractor that's capable of pulling that we would need something quite a well substantially bigger than what we've got at the moment now there was an other option um with the cultivators they did have now they've got this one here but i think that's just uh yeah it's just fertilizer so you've yeah you can oh hang on what's this subsoil it prepares additionally this machine offers a possibility to seed direct so how does that work uh i don't actually know how that one can seed and well or how that one can seed either i don't know how that works whether they've got to like be held in working conjunction with those or not i, yeah, I really have no idea because i don't think it's anything to do with that one that one there is it can fertilize that one doesn't do anything that one can fertilize and it can be used instead of a plow but these here they're saying that they can sow seeds now it can do standard seeds um which is the same as the drill that we've got actually they won't even do that they've just got literally wheat and barley and grass and oilseed radishes they won't even do uh canola with that one so you, you don't have any additional options on it whatsoever but how does it i don't know how it works this is the bit that's got me confused is um how you actually get the thing to work because it doesn't say what it's supposed to join onto in order to get it to do this uh if we go to this you go to fertilizer spreaders it doesn't have anything in there sprayers we've got the star one right there and if we go back into the sewing machines we've just got these two and it doesn't actually give us any options for joining these in either it doesn't it's not like something that it can team up with in order to be able to plant these extra bits so yeah i'm at a bit of a loss at the moment as to how it's supposed to work because there's no like additional tanks unless I think it's the sewing machines, isn't it? With the um, the Coon DLC, you got this one right here. This one will take seeds. So if we, can that one there go on the front, and then you put the um, not the star one, uh, yeah, the star or the cultivator on the back. I don't know how. I don't know what combination you've got to have in order to be able to get these to. Sew. Oh, no, wait a minute. Standard cedar box. That's how you do it. Of course it is. You put a cedar box on the top. You just add the cedar box. Um, this one is a five meter drill, and it doesn't actually. Oh, it says eight hundred and forty-five liters. It uh, it doesn't do fertilizer. It just does seed. And eight hundred and forty-five is a lot better than what we've got. So maybe that would be the way forward. Of course, I can't believe I just spent all that time sort of puzzling about this. It's literally, it's just an option right on here. I really apologize for that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we've got... So you, we could get that one with the cedar box. That's going to give us a five-meter drill. And the one that we're using at the moment is the sewing machine in here, which is um, there. This is a 3.6-meter drill. It's got a bigger tank, but, I mean, the actual seed tank part is not particularly big. Um yeah you have a look on there we're on i think it does about 450 liters so 
I think the cultivator option would probably be the best one although it's not going to give us many options if we want to be planting beans or anything like that then we're going to have to use this we won't be able to use that cultivator again that's a bit of a shame so we'll we'll have to give this some serious thought about how we go about approaching this because i'm at the moment i'm genuinely not sure that one is doing an excellent job so let's go back down through here to this one and we're going to get this trailer on and we're going to move those bales we get all of those bales moved out of the way and then we're able to start mowing and then turn the hay and then bale it or rake it and then bale it a lot of work just to clear that tiny little bit and the reason that i'm doing all that is because in real life that is what you would do it would be unusual to not do anything to it to just start working that um land with the grass really long because it's quite awkward if you've got really long grass there it does make life more difficult you would try to get rid of the grass if you could because it just makes it so much easier for handling the earth for handling everything else around there um if you can mow it off first so as this grass is really long we haven't done anything with it for this whole series we're gonna say we want to get rid of all of it first and then we can do something with it um and then then we can do something with the land um right i've got the bale loading going so we'll just load up these bales as well as we can there we go few there and i just got a few more on this side that i can grab there we go right that's one load i think it's going to be two loads in total on this one bring that back around there we will of course put the actual bales onto the trailer so we want to unload them onto the trailer and then put the straps on like that and this is where we the tractor has a bit more of a challenge in pulling these bales around um, because they're quite a bit heavier once you actually unload them onto the trailer um, and yes I know we're driving all over the grass at the moment that we're about to go and mow that's very unrealistic we'll just kind of gloss over that bit because we're moving everything out of the way I suppose technically we wouldn't really have been using the area if we were leaving it to, for the grass to grow really long um, I mean we can accept some damage to the crop because we're not doing this primarily for crop we're doing it primarily to make the job of clearing the whole site a lot easier so gaining a crop out of it is not the primary reason for doing the cut this time whereas you know if it was a field that that was our primary reason that would be a altogether different so let me just bring that on there we want to undo those straps load it back onto the lorry onto the trailer rather and i'll move that one over there and then press y to unload so there's one load out of the way so we go and grab the next one and then there'll be one more after that which is the round bales we don't need to worry about putting anything into the um, cattle at the moment because they've got... They're completely full other than the little bit of hay. And I want to put that grass that's there, I want to put that in for them first so that it's out the way and then we haven't got to worry about it. So bring this one on round. And I've activated the pick up the bales. There we go. Run through those. And I don't know if we're going to fit all... Oh, actually, yeah, we should do. It's going to be going to be close actually it's, it's absolutely spot on i love it when it does that and it does actually happen quite a lot you you go and work and you work and you work on your fields and um you you pull trailer load after trailer load off the field and then it ends up being an exact trailer load at the end and it does surprise me just how frequently that does happen it is is absolutely brilliant although um sandy bay Actually, I, can't, I shouldn't tell you, really, should I? Because um, I've got... You haven't actually seen it yet. That's, tom that's, um, that's tomorrow's Sandy Bay episode. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite work out as a full trailer load to finish the straw for Sandy Bay this time around. I'll just tell you that much. But um, I thought it was actually... When it happened to me, I actually I looked at it. It did make me laugh a little bit. Because um, the chances of it happening like that are about as remote as... Um, well technically it's the same chance as having an exactly full trailer but the exactly full trailer does seem to happen a little more frequently than what happens in um tomorrow's episode just unload that there and then i want to load back on do that one and then unload there we go so there's two loads and we just go and get those round bales so then we are ready to mow that patch we're ready to turn that patch and we're ready to rake it up and bale it it's a lot of work just for that tiny tiny little there's hardly anything there i'm actually thinking we'd be better off if we just went um 
we mowed it and then we went and got a, a forage wagon and we just gathered up the grass and left it in the forage wagon. It'd probably be a lot easier than all this hassle that we're going through at the moment. Let me just go into here. I need to just change. Right, round bales 1.3 is probably the right one. So we can just, yes it is, excellent. Start loading those on. And there we go. Right, now when you unload these, especially considering you can see it now, it's leaning downhill ever so slightly. You do have to be careful when you're doing this that you don't accidentally um, unload them too much. So what you do is you get right, it's L to put the straps on. Um, I've pressed X now to stop it from loading. And then you press Y to unload onto the trailer. And then you press L to do the straps. Do this quickly. I recommend you do this quickly because you see they started to roll. And they will just roll right off the back of the trailer. And that will be the end of it. You will lose the whole lot. So um, by strapping them down really fast you don't end up losing the whole lot and they will stay on the trailer and yeah you don't have to go chasing around to try and pick them up because sometimes it's really really inconvenient where you've got to the, the distances you've got to go to get the bales once they start rolling off the trailer they can it gives them a little bit of momentum they kind of roll off the back and they don't just roll and sort of thud down to the ground they keep going um and that's a it's not particularly like real life um silage bales are quite heavy they don't tend they do start rolling but they don't tend to roll as much as you think um so yeah it can be a bit of a nuisance in this game uh, especially with silage i mean don't be wrong hay bales they will roll and roll and roll and roll and never stop but grant heavy silage bales they don't tend to roll all that much now i'm just going to take the straps off and immediately start loading because otherwise oh you know, I really thought they were going to start rolling off the back. Apparently they didn't want to this time. So let me move that one over to there. And then we'll unload onto that bit there. Perfect. Uh, ish, he says, as the bales roll down across the field. Please don't roll away. Let's go and catch them a minute. Otherwise, we're going to have them right in front of our footpath they just that's the problem with this game is once they start moving they just keep going and going and going and never stop right if you could just stop there that would be great there we go right i have to come out round them that that, that is that i don't get it why they do that i mean i know how the physics is sort it's well it's, i know how the physics is sort of supposed to work in this game but and i think that you know that they are supposed to like stop after a while but it seems that the round bales have got their own physics, which is completely different to any other physics in the game. And that's why, as soon as they start moving, they will just keep going and going and going. You notice it when you're bailing up a field, that they never, ever seem to stop. They will keep going until they eventually hit a hedge on the far side of the field. It's just the tiniest, tiniest incline, and they will still keep moving. They just, just won't stop. <laughs> it's quite funny, you watch them moving. Anyway, um... We haven't really got time to start that today, so we're just going to go over and we're going to check on... Oh, we did want to check on this one. Let's just see how our cultivator is doing. Um, go to here. Right, he's doing a grand job. He's doing absolutely brilliant. So we come back through to this one and see how he's doing. He's got 100 litres of seed left. Uh, no, 120 litres of seed. He's got 100 litres of fertiliser. Fertiliser is still doing okay-ish, but yeah. We're going to need to address that probably in tomorrow's episode going to be a bit of a nuisance. I didn't want to have to worry about that until it finished that field. Never mind. Um, oh, it's just a bit of ploughed land. And I want to go through to this one because I wanted to take one look at this tree. Before I do that, a weekly question. Do you want me to plough up um, this? Do you want me to leave the field as it is? Do you want me to leave this field square so that it's nice and easy for the hired help to work the field? Or do you want me to go round with the plough and make the field edges more rounded and natural looking? Um, so that, you know, it's going to it'll give us a bit more land. Um, it looks a little better, but it's a little bit more difficult for the hired help to work. So there's pros and cons to both of them. I don't know which one you want, so it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Do you want this field left with the square edges that we've got right now? Or do you want me to go around and give it a more natural curve? Right. Now we got this one here. So let me just, um, right, uh, mouse buttons. You press the left mouse button and it lifts you up. And you press the right mouse button to 
slow down or stop and of course the um, only problem with that is course play uh, ah, there we go right I want to get rid of that one so I can lift this one up like this and it slows down it it, it is um, increasing but it does actually the vertical velocity does slow down after a while now if we change the camera angle You've got one that's directly in front of you. You can move it round, but you do sort of see the the parts of the um, the drone. That's the word I'm looking for. You see the parts of the drone as you look around, and then you've got one underneath. And again, you can move this one round, and you can look up, but it's like the camera is directly underneath. So let me just go back through, and we'll go to this one here. So I want to turn it round just a little bit so that we can see our tree again. This is going to be one of the last times we look at this tree. Right, Christmas is over, and you only have, I mean, traditionally you keep the Christmas decorations up until the 12th day of Christmas, which is not very far away. I think the 12th day of Christmas is actually like the 5th of January or something, so we've got the decorations for this week, and then we'll be having to get rid of them. But uh, that is all I've got time for today, so if you enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give me a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me, get them to come and watch as well, that would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Rithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.